first off, Christian, so many visual setups. You're shooting in that wide expanse. What was a production day like on the on the set, which is basically <laughs> Mother Nature? It just seems like in a very <laughs> ambitious undertaking. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it, ambitious is 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 the uh, understatement. I mean, we we um, we were running running running. What is it? Running. My brain is fried. Um, running gun production. Yeah. Um, and we were climbing mountains and finding locations like the very next day. Um, so, you know, luckily I live out here. I live in Joshua Tree, California. So, um, and we had some local talent and local, we had a local producer, Michelle Cicero, who helped us find these locations really quickly. But it was, that we were all exhausted. I mean, everyone was grabbing equipment, moving it. There was no sort of old school Hollywood, you know, don't touch that, you know, Apple box. It was, you know, Martin was carrying, you know, C stands and, you know, and then having to act the next moment. So it was, it was <laughs> rough, but really, but it made us all feel like we were one, you know, we were all coming together. Quick question for Martin, uh, with you carrying C-stands and everything, did you actually ask for a secondary salary as part of the crew as well uh, on your thing? And then also <laughs> was being out in, out right there in Joshua Tree, what was it like for you as an actor shooting in that open space? Uh, like, like like you said, mother nature, it, you know, we had all the elements, wind, earth, water, fire. <laughs> we got yeah. rained out. We, you know, we battled fires. We had, uh, you know, it, it, dust storms, you name it. Um, but, it, it, you know. It, and those are both literal and metaphoric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, man, just just what an incredible time. It, we The movie, we shot it for, what, five weeks, four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. It felt like a lifetime, really, in some ways. Uh, felt like we were out there forever. Uh, you get lost in that timeless expanse um, and, and without looking at the clock, you know, you just show up at work in the morning and then, you know, you, I put my cell phone away and, and we just, we just hung out in the desert and, and, and made art, man. It was, it was awesome. Uh, I loved it. I've never got to shoot out there before and uh, dude, opportunity of a lifetime. You know, Christian, on that sense, you know, after watching this, people, if they're cinephiles, they can go watch Tell them Willie Boys here and actually research the historical facts and fiction regarding this entire story. But can you also talk about the thematic underpinnings where you have all of these individuals going out into that mother nature with their own preset beliefs and they come out of it with a different viewpoint? I mean, I, I really love how you actually shape that narrative. Yeah, there's a there's a simplicity to to the thematic element of the journey. You know, it's it's a journey. Um, and if you really want to take a deep dive, I highly suggest uh, your listeners and people to to research the Chimuewe and the salt song um, tradition that 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 is is very emblematic of their culture. And that is a, a journey into the afterlife. And that's really something that it's a song. You know, it's a it's a it's a song that they sing all night, all day um, to help the spirit who has passed reach the afterlife. And so in a way, this was, you know, our our sort of artistic interpretation of this lyrical journey, you know, that every character takes to reach a certain conclusion, whether that's the moving on physically in the physical form or moving on from from this ridiculous witch hunt, uh, whatever it is that we need to move on from the, the politicizing events of that era. There's a, a lot of things we can take from this story and apply it to today. And I'm hoping that some people can get that out of it. So Martin, what did you get out of it? Because look, I, I love my my action driven Westerns and visceral with a visceral nature, but this is more reflect, reflective and meditative. What was it like for you just mm -hmm. having that complete journey as an actor here? Yeah, I mean, it was, the, you know, like, uh, you know, reflective, meditative, but it was very physical for me too, because I was running every day. Um, you know, and that, and that was one thing that uh, kind of helped helped me find the character and set the tone. I mean, Willie Boy was was a desert runner, and you could run up to 50, 60 miles, 80 miles a day. You know, um, so I was running like five to seven. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. but but it was you know it just it, it became that became the meditative part for me. I'd get out there and run, and then and then in the mornings before work, and then and then go to set, and uh, you know it just. It, it was just finding, um, you know, the opportunity to find stuff uh, about out about the character that wasn't written in the script, um, things like that, you know, um, of that nature and, and helping in Christian, helping me find the character and, and uh, really helping me kind of find the performance that, that, 
that it required. Uh, it was a tough job in a lot of ways. It took a lot out of me, um, honestly. Um, <laughs> But it was really mm-hmm. rewarding experience, you know. I I thought like you know as I'm as I'm working on the movie and going through scenes, I'm like, oh yeah, we're rocking and rolling. But once I wrapped, I was I was burnt out. I went home to Alaska, and stayed up there for a couple of weeks and just and just recouped. And uh, <laughs> and uh, one of those yeah, roles, was, yeah, it was it took a lot. We were dealing with you know we were dealing with some 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 voices that needed to be heard. You know, this was a story that was sort of um, corrupted for many 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 years, and mm-hmm. and there was there's a long tradition out here, which is the the fact that these these voices have been heard, and I think there was a lot of mercurial energy out there that was uncertain whether we were helping or or hurting the story. And I think, you know, the best thing that happened to me was, you know, witnessing the tribal screening in Palm Springs, where there was about 600 tribal elders that were there, and and to feel the story being embraced. Um, and I it wasn't really until that moment that I felt a kind of release uh, and a relief. Mm. Um, and I think Martin was holding all of that uh, because, you know, he, there was one character called Willie Bo is really, I believe, the, the accurate name, but Willie Boy. And um, so all of that energy was going to him, you know, during that whole period. And whether, whatever your belief system is, that shit, that shit's strong, you know, <laughs> that shit is strong. And then yeah. in, in reference to the meditative part of it, you know, of the film, there was a calculative sort of, you know, idea to, uh, you know, Growing up in the West and in those periods, you didn't hear, you didn't hear, there weren't shootouts every, every day, right? There was a, a, there is a, there was a laconic meditative sort of, sort of calm peace. And then all of a sudden when guns blaze, it's a shock, you know? And I think that we tried to capture that in our piece, you know, there's this, there's this, there's this beautiful quiet and calm and stillness. And then when guns happen, it's, it's crazy. Um, and and it's really it's it, we we don't want you to get numb to it, you know. Whereas you know a lot of action films is just guns, 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 and you're just numb to it all the time, one one thing after the other. We wanted to sort of shock you with that and and bring the poetry of the reality of the space and the place forward. Yeah, very quick question before I let you guys go on regarding reality. You know, Christian, you talked about living in Joshua Tree and Martin with Alaska. Is there something to be said about when you're making a film or TV series or work of art? to not actually live right across the street from some kind of movie studio. You actually live at a place you call home, a home that inspires you and feeds you as an artist. What for both of you feeds you just not, as opposed to not being right in like in the heart of Hollywood, so to speak. Yeah. Well, that's where I live in Joshua Tree, you know, having that perspective, having that space, super, it's, it's life given to me. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Same thing for me. Um, I live in Arizona and I spend a lot of time out on the land. I go to Alaska a lot, spend a lot of time out on the land. And, and uh, you know, when I first moved away from L.A., it was always this pull to go back to the city. But now that I've been living away from there for a couple of years, it's kind of like oh, I'm finding more inspiration, you know, traveling around and going to different places and meeting new people. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, it's just, yeah, everywhere. We draw from everywhere, you know, <laughs> Our, <laughs> artists, you know. <laughs> Other yeah. art, like that's that's one of the best uh, uh, pieces of advice I got young early on was go go look at other forms of art to develop your acting. Go look at paintings. Go to plays. Go to uh, you know look at other other art forms. So mm. um, yeah, that's kind of where I you know no matter where I'm at, I'm always looking for something to that piques my interest yeah. artistically. Mm. <laughs> And as you're leaving, can I apologize for this uh, for this very impossible question? Right off the top of your head, can each of you name one of your all-time favorite films, and what is it about this film that is special for you? Well, we're, we were talking about the genre, so Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid, for me was such a big one. Um, and and again, it's about the human connection and the the humanity behind it, um, regardless of whether you're the good good guy or the bad guy. Finding your humanity, yeah. Yeah, I think One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest just popped into my mind. So I'll say that, you know, it's another film about crazy people, but also humanity and, and the nature of, you know, the nature of people and, and uh, brutality of people. You know, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's really a beautiful movie. Mm. If any, yeah. Anybody, everybody should watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's yeah. my top five of all time. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you guys yeah. so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Kimberly.